Hi friends, I am Shiva. In this session, we will learn cursor. So, how to use the cursor in the PLS school programs? We will learn. So, what is the cursor? Cursor is a SQL memory area. This is this one is record by record process. At the same time, if you want to require to process the multiple records, that is possible by in cursor memory area only. So, see, we should go to depthly about the cursor. What are the SQL queries we are passing to Oracle server? In the Oracle server, whatever the data you want to as per the SQL query, the data will be processed in the cursor memory area. So, this one we hear the cursor is two types. First one is implicit cursor, next one is explicit cursor. See, let us we learn first one is explicit cursor, then we can learn implicit cursor. See, first one is explicit cursor. This explicit cursor is using for written a multiple records and this one is record by record process. So, see here SQL statements is written multiple records is called explicit cursor and also this one is record by record process. So, it is called explicit cursor. So, see explicit cursor is life cycle you, you want to know. So, see here this one is declare open fetch and close this is the expli explicit cursor life cycle. So, if you want to use this explicit cursor life cycle you have to follow this. So, see here if you want to use the explicit cursor in the PLS school program you have to follow this explicit cursor life cycle. So, so each one the declare session having one syntax open, fetch and close these are some syntax as per the syntax we have to implement the explicit cursor in the PLS school programs. So, initially we should know why they introduced this explicit cursor where we should use we will learn for that. So, see before that we should know what are the syntax they introduced of Oracle to following explicit cursor. So, see before that we should go for that. Next one is first one is declare session. In the declare session we have the syntax. So, see here first one I have taken declare session from the explicit cursor life cycle. So, what are the syntax we have? We will learn for that. So, simply you can observe while we are writing the program, you will understand in depthly. So, before that, you can observe this is the syntax. Okay. See here, this is the declare session. In the declare session of a cursor, in the in the declare session, how we can declare the cursor? This is cursor, cursor name is select star from table name where condition. This is the syntax you should follow while you are declaring the cursor in the declare session of the PLSQL block. So, see here, this is a declare, this is a syntax for declare a cursor. Okay. So, example for this declare, example for declare session for declaring a cursor. So, this is the declare session declare. In the declare session, in the, this one declare session, in the declare session having in the PLS school block, in the PLS school block declare session, we are creating a cursor declaration here. This one is a cursor declaration. Okay. So, see here cursor. So, you can observe here. This one is cursor. Cursor name C1 is select star from here also is select star from 
table name here on table name emp1 so see this is a where condition here this is a where condition same here also where condition so where job equal to clerk so this is a where condition this is a syntax for declare session so you can observe one thing see here this one entire this one is a belongs to sql query sorry sorry entire this one is belongs to sql query select a star from table name where condition whatever the data you want to retrieving from this the data will be storing into cursor c cursor one cursor name cursor cursor name in this cursor name data will be storing this data will be processing in this cursor memory area so it is called this is a cursor memory cursor is what is the meaning of cursor cursor is a processing cursor is a sql memory area at the same time another name is cursor is a temporary memory area so this cursor is a process a multiple records as per this condition the cursor memory in the cursor memory area the, uh, that will be process a multiple records and record by record process okay now let's we go other one so next one is open statement so in the open statement we are given syntax this one in the syntax you have to observe it open and cursor name here in the cursor name which is the cursor name here in the declare session what are the declare what are the cursor name you are used here c1 cursor name i use the same cursor name you can use here c1 okay same same as you have to observe in the example for that for opening a cursor cursor this is a open this is a c1 is the cursor name this cursor name where we are declared as the initially in the declare session of the plsql block in the in the block which name i have given c1 name the same c1 name you have to mention here okay then you can open the cursor let's we go for the third one fetch statement first one is over a declare session how to declare a how to declare a explicit cursor then open how to open the third one we should go for that fetch statement in the fetch fetch syntax how we can fetch the data so you have to follow this syntax fetch fetch cursor name into this plsql variables variable 1 variable 2 variable 3 so on over oh, this variable you have to declare in the plsql session plsql session of your declare session so you have to declare this yes same so from the cursor c1 in the cursor c1 in the cursor c1 data is available okay see in the previous case we are open the cursor in the cursor having data so that data we are fetching from the cursor we are fetching the data into storing into this plsql variables so we will learn for that uh, before that you have to observe for that see here cursor name this is our uh, close cursor so now in the previous cases we have declared the cursor so we have declared the cursor then open the cursor from the cursor i fetch the data from the cursor then so now i want to close the cursor so how we can close you have to follow this syntax close cursor then so let's we go for in the program how we can use the explicit cursor in the plsql programs so how we can implement for that the, then you can observe in it in this program see here this is the ex, example for explicit cursor so before that you can observe it this is the uh, declare session in the declare session as per this declare session you have i i followed this syntax then i implemented in the declare session of the plsql block so see here 
I followed the syntax and implemented here. Then open statements, I followed the syntax, I implemented here. Then a fetch statement, I followed the syntax, I implemented the this here. So then close, the close statement I used here by following the syntax. Okay. By following the syntax to implement the explicit cursor in the PLS school program. So I followed this. Okay. See here, you can observe in this cursor C1, cursor, cursor name here, cursor, cursor name C1 is select, is select star instead of star. I used only two columns, E name and shall from which table EMP1 from table name here EMP1 table. So same has the where condition that is optional. If you want to use, you may use, you may not use. This one is optional. So, I want to, I used here the where condition, where department number equal to 10, I used here. As per the department number, so data will be storing in this cursor memory area. So, so see here. Next, next one, I declare two variables here. This one the PLS school variables, p underscore e name, where current two, because of I to, uh, this column will consisting characters values so that I use this p underscore e name and where cut to data type. Next shall the shall value consisting number values so that I use number this is a variable name. Okay. See here let us go for this one open statement this open statement by using this syntax I implemented here the open and cursor name in the declare session which name I used here C1, the same C1 name you have to use here. Okay, let us go to the fetch statement. The fetch statement by following this syntax I implemented here. I implemented fetch, fetch, cursor name, same cursor name. What we declare in the declare session of the cursor name, the same cursor name you have to use here. Cursor name into p underscore e name. I already declared this variable p underscore e name comma p underscore sharp. This i variable I used here. So, what are the data you have from the cursor? The cursor data will be storing into in this in this uh, PLS school variables. Okay. Yes, same as I want to know for the confirmation data will be getting or not to, to in this PLS school variables for the confirmation you have to use this statement dbms underscore underscore output dot put underscore line you have to follow this PLS school variables by using this the data will be displaying on the PLS scale environment let's we go for the another fetch statement I used same as so okay this is a fetch c1 into p underscore e name comma p underscore shall the same I used so, this is a record by record process. So, that first record will be storing into in this, in this variables. The next automatically the pointer will be going to next, next record. So, see here, the next record will be going and storing into in this PLS school variables. So, next I want to know this. Uh, the second data is available in this variables or not. If you want to know for the confirmation, I use this statement, data will be storing. Then I close this cursor. By following this syntax, I close this cursor. Let us we observe in the in-depthly internally what is happening while we are using, while you are while we are using explicit cursor in the PLS school program, where data will be getting. So, what is the process will be internally happening? We will learn in this case. So, see before that you can observe we are declaring in this search, select ename comma shall from emp1 emp1 where department number equal to 10 this is the belongs to this is the SQL statement sorry SQL query this is SQL query 
this SQL query, what are the data you are retrieving by using this SQL query? That data will be storing into this C1. Cursor name in the cursor memory area data will be storing. So see, this is internally happening. So while we are while we are declaring in this cursor internally what will happen go to in this session in this session what will happen cursor will be created cursor member this is a cursor memory area this one is the cursor memory area cursor memory area is created without data with cursor name is c1 so because i already used with cursor name c1 this cursor memory area, how much memory is allocating to in this cursor area? Up to 2 MB data. Up to, up to 2 MB data, up to 2 MB memory will be released for storing this SQL query data. Whatever the SQL query we are passed, the query da the data will be getting from the database. The data will be storing storing into in this cursor memory area up to 2 MB more than 2 MB data cursor is unable to store this okay up to 2 MB memory will be released in this cursor memory area <coughs> okay now so while we are declaring in, in while we are declaring the cursor internally reserve the memory but there is no data let's we go to the second one begin session so in this session what will happen open statement in the open go to the open in this stage what will happen c1 cursor name see this is a c1 cursor name this is a c1 cursor name in the c1 cursor name when you are open the cursor internally what will happen See, when you are write this statement, this format, open C1 cursor, then it will be going to C. When you are open the cursor C1, then what will happen? Go to in this stage, declare session, in the declare session, yes, here, this one is the SQL query. This SQL query select ENAM comma shall from EMP1 where department number equal to 10. So this query will be executed. Then whatever the data will be getting from this query, the data will be storing into C1 variable. So now the data will be getting to in this stage. When you are open directly, data will be going and storing into in this stage. When you are open the cursor C1, now from this stage to in this stage data will be storing okay so see here so here so here e name e name shall shall only only this type kind of data only we are retrieving okay so as per this condition department number department department number equal to 10 over the department number equal to 10 those employees data will be displayed in the cursor memory area while we are open the cursor okay now in this stage data is available in the cursory memory area okay now see here use another fetch statement here in this fetch statement what will happen internally so internally see here when your data will be getting into cursor memory area while you are open the cursor the the pointer will be point to first record first record so now when you are open this first fetch statement go to in this cursor memory area which record will be pointed the pointing the uh, point that record first record this clerk and shall so this clerk value will be go to fetch for fetching the data from the cursor c1 so in the go to in this c1 cursor memory area and taking the data e name data e name clerk clerk will be storing into p underscore e name next shall shall value will be take 
fetch and store into p underscore shall plsql variable storing into in this plsql variables now in this variables we have some values so i want to know for the confirmation those first first record only data will be retrieving from the cursor memory area or not for the confirmation, I am using this dbms underscore output dot put underscore line. So in that, in that I used p underscore e name, p underscore e name, p underscore shall here. Now first record will be displayed here. Now I am using another fetch statement. In this fetch statement, so I am using fetch. Where we want to fetch the data from the cursor. C1 cursor. Where it is there in the C1 cursor? Go to C1. See here. C1 here. In the C1 cursor, data will be retrieving, retrieving. Correct. So first record we already fetched. Then automatically the pointer will be pointing to second record. In the second record, which value is available? King. Salary with thousand. The salary value will be retrieving, fetching, and storing into P underscore E name. Then Next, this shall will be fetching into p underscore shall. So, now in this second fetch statement, we have the second record from the cursor memory area. Okay. Now, now here, this pointer again pointing to third automatically pointing to third record. Okay. Now, this here I have used another statement for displaying the this output in the PLSQL environment so that i use this p underscore ename comma p underscore shall so i don't want to use this another fetch state third fetch statement i did not use it here because i don't want to require to use if you want to use you can use another fetch statement this third record also uh, displayed same as miller and thousand okay so i did not use it here so immediately i want to close the cursor immediately i want to close the cursor here also close cursor c1 internally what will happen go to in this stage in the cursor memory array with cursor name what is the name of the cursor here c1 cursor in the c1 cursor release the memory of cursor so in the previous cases the 2 mb up to 2 mb data will be up to 2 mb memory will be reserved for storing the data against the plsql query Correct. So that whatever the result the memory, that memory will be released from the cursor. For that, I used cursor C1. Sorry, close C1. Okay. Now our program will be end. So see here. Uh, now we will execute this program same program that two see these two records i should display in the plsql environment because we fetched two records by using two fetch statements first one and second one so the same data will be getting or not we will observe it okay uh, now here what i am doing the same program i am copy here copy go to our plsql tool so paste here so miller and king we output will be getting here miller and king sorry sorry clerk thousand and king is thousand so let's be go to here clerk is thousand king is thousand okay so this is a process to use the explicit cursor in the plsql programs so see now i want to fetch a multiple records by using only the only one fetch statement then what you will do you have to use the loop within the fetch statement so for that you have to know some attributes so then only the, the data will be getting so for, we will see in the day session how to use the cursor attributes 
okay how to use the explicit cursor attributes we will learn how to fetch a multiple records from the cursors by using explicit cursor attributes okay so if you like my videos please subscribe my channel and share and comments on that